Amen. So, can we have our Bible verses up? Um, you've done a lot of standing, so we'll um, we'll read them together seated, um, if that's okay. Um, when you come to a passage like this, um, if you're not consistent in your preaching, you just skip over it because it's too difficult, um, because there's some stuff in here that needs explaining, and it's far easier not to explain it and just move on to another miracle, but... We're going to do our best tonight just to be true to what God is doing for us and preach the whole counsel of God. It's important that we don't miss things out of the Bible and uh, we want to be those that rightly divide the word of truth. So from the top then, leaving that place. Amen. What I want to talk to you about this evening is forgetting our culture and embracing the kingdom. And uh, at a glance, this passage seems quite racist. Um, a bit of an argy-bargy between um, this lady and the disciples and Jesus himself. And as I said, many preachers might have skipped over these verses, but I intend to try and do them justice. And I know there's something more that I have to communicate to you that I've got in my notes, so I'm just praying the Holy Spirit will help me do that. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon, and a Canaanite woman from the vicinity came to him crying out. This wasn't... Jesus' normal territory. As you well know, he'd been up and down the shores of Galilee and uh, in and out of Jerusalem. Tyre and Sidon is modern Lebanon. So if you want to kind of just, uh, if you wanted like a bit of a map thing, and it's right on the Mediterranean. So it's a, a beautiful, beautiful place. And sometimes uh, due to our circumstances, we find ourselves not in the normal place that we normally are. And um, sometimes that's when God works in our unfamiliarity and um, there was something happening here and I believe God is doing something with us and it means that sometimes we're going to have to find ourselves in uncharted territory and Andy was very clear this morning in what he said and quit praying for him he got a really bad chest infection um, but he wanted to be here and one of the things he said in, in our journey with Mark was that you know if he could have controlled the circumstances he would have but actually we're in a position now of having to be totally reliant on what God is speaking into our hearts and into our lives. You know, that's a great place to breathe. It makes you vulnerable. And when you're chartering new territory, you want a map. You want to know what the next steps are. But our friends, we have to trust and believe God, what God is doing here, that he will direct our paths. If we acknowledge him in all our ways, the scripture says, he will direct our paths. And very often we want the blueprint before we get into the journey. I like Abraham. It says he got up not knowing where he was going, but he went for God anyway and moved into untarted territory. And I think there's, there's an element sometimes we have to take some steps of faith, not even knowing where we're going. And this Canaanite woman came from that vicinity and cried out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is der terribly demon-possessed and suffering. The Amplified Bible says she was loud, she was troublesome, and her cry was urgent. There is need all around us. Regardless of the culture, regardless of, this wasn't Galilee now, this was somewhere else, but there were still people in need. And regardless of ethnicity, colour and race, there are people all around us and they have need for a saviour. That came very clearly out this morning, didn't it? If I could have paid to paint that picture to this church, I would have done. Just what God has done in seeking out a lost soul opening a door of opportunity, using several, if not dozens of us to actually disciple and then seeing a full commitment to Christ. It was wonderful to be able to hear his testimony, baptise him and pray that he get filled with the Holy Ghost all in one go. That's the Bible, isn't it? Yeah. And more and more we want to do that as people come into our church. But there are people all around us. But for some people, we feel quite equipped to be able to deal with them because they look like us, they talk like us. We have a kind of a, an affinity with certain people, but I believe God is taking us into a place where he's going to put us on the edge because some people we don't like dealing with, some people we feel we have a real issue with dealing with, and we need to trust the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives as he brings people to us. Some people just don't fit into our agenda. I know that to be true. There are people that I'm grateful for and I love and I can deal with and there's some other people and I often say to Claire they just do my head in have you ever, have you ever said that 
And, and it, it, that's the way in life as we deal with people, as we come across people in our paths, there are always going to be those that we are going to struggle with. And I think they were struggling with this woman. Jesus did not answer a word and his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, she keeps on crying after us. I believe Jesus was focused on the job in hand and I think for all of us, we need to be focused on what God puts into our hands to do at any given time. And he'd withdrawn the team. If you read chapter 15 up to that point, he's been having this uh, discourse with the religious people of his time. And he's been challenging some of their kind of uh, hypocrisy and uh, challenging their commitment to the living God. And I think that the reason Jesus withdrew into this place is because he wanted to share with his disciples. He wanted to take some of the teaching that he'd been sharing and giving out to the religious people and he wanted to break it small so his disciples totally understood what he was saying. And we see him time and time again doing that, taking them out on mission, then bringing them back in and debriefing them. And very often those times were the times that got interrupted. It was one of those times when they had to feed 5,000 people. They were going to have some downtime and all of a sudden they were faced with a huge issue. And this happens throughout the ministry of Jesus and it will happen throughout your ministry and the ministry of this church that sometimes we get disrupted. How dare the Holy Spirit or people get in the way of our nice, neat programs? But they will and that's just the way it ought to be. And we see it here in the life of Jesus. They were obviously in this time of ministry and as I say, ministry is complex and the disciples were trying to learn from Jesus and this woman was getting on their nerves. In the midst of this lovely teaching session, this downtime where they get some special time with Jesus on their own, this woman is causing a great deal of annoyance. She's really bugging them and bothering them. They wanted some quality time with Jesus, but this woman was butting in. She was spoiling their meeting. I am praying for the time that our meetings get interrupted by those that are so desperate for Jesus they don't know how to behave. It happened in the book of Acts when people were crying out in the middle of uh, Peter's sermon, what must we do to be saved? How dare they? Didn't they know that this man was like a novice preacher and uh, they're shouting out and hooting and asking him how to get saved? I believe that sometimes we need to have our program disrupted. There are times when we legitimately serve God and we have things planned but we should always be in the place to be prepared to get them messed up. We should plan and prepare and be prepared, but we have to let the Holy Spirit or people in need change our agenda. And it's difficult because we love everything neat and tidy in our little boxes. We like church to run like clockwork, like it always does. But I'm looking for the days, and I believe they're upon us, where sometimes we'll plan to do one thing and the Holy Spirit does something completely different. Or sometimes we plan to do one thing and there are so many people seeking Christ, we just have to change it. That we are coming to this on a, with a lovely Sunday morning service and, and see there's half a dozen unsafe people in here and the message that I have for the morning, we put to one side and we preach the gospel wholeheartedly. I believe those days are upon us and we need to have that flexibility about our ministry. Always listening for the work of the Holy Spirit and always looking to see what people God is bringing across our path. I want you to see this verse here now, 24. He said, I've only been sent to the lost sheep of Israel. Now that's a strange thing for Jesus to say, isn't it? Because we know that he's met some religious people. He met a man called Nicodemus in John 3 and he told him that God loved the world. And now he's kind of narrowing it down and saying that he's for the lost sheep of Israel. I believe that that is absolutely true. There's no compromise in what Jesus was saying. Jesus came to the Jews first and his intention always was to save the whole world because God has a plan and God works the way God works. But I want you to notice also what he says about this, this wonderful phrase about the lost sheep of Israel. <coughs> they might have been God's chosen people in the sense that God called Abraham. But Jesus comes to them because he knows they are lost. We need always to have a heart 
for the lost. And Jesus had come to minister to his people that they might be set free. And this is what I want you to see because this is the start of really the the whole crux of this story. This woman came and knelt before him and said, Lord, help me. Her faith was desperate. She was wanting God to do something for her. And Jesus replied to her, is it not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs? Man, that sounds harsh, doesn't it? Why would Jesus talk about this woman being a dog and uh, not having something good from God? I think that Jesus was looking for determined faith. God is always seeking, and I will share some of this on Thursday night, God God is always seeking those that that have faith towards him. He's seeking those that would worship in him in spirit and in truth, but he's always seeking faith. His, His eyes are up and down on the earth looking for those who have got faith towards him. And he he challenges her, really. So often we're a little bit like that. We start off pretty determined, but then our faith starts to wane. We have a challenge that comes into our lives or an issue that knocks on our door. And all of a sudden it's like, well, I don't know whether I can believe God for this anymore or not. But this woman wasn't like that. There was a determination. There was a steely determination. She, she kept on crying out. She, even when the disciples wanted her to go away, she threw herself at the feet of Jesus. And she was believing in this very, very tricky situation. This woman was going nowhere. She believed that Jesus could and would heal her daughter. So... Jesus begins to challenge her again. He challenges her belief system. He says, look, you know, this stuff is for the Jews first. So is it right that you get it? That's what he's saying. I love what she says. Yes, it is, Lord. That takes a whole lot of guts. She wants something from Jesus and he's asked her a question, but I don't think he's asking her a question to catch her out. I think he wants to see the level of her faith. She says, even the dogs eat crumbs that fall from their master's table. Or in other words, you might have come to these chosen people of Israel, but if they're not taking it, I want some of it. And something dawned across my mind as I was preparing this. Sometimes unbelievers can have more faith than us who call ourselves believers and that needs never to be the case but it is the case there are people out there as odd as it might sound who actually come to God in faith they have no idea about church they have no idea about Jesus religion or anything else but actually their their belief is so great they want to see God do something in their lives we can't call ourselves believers and not be believers we have to believe God And this woman was on on this path. She was tenacious with her faith. And as we read the accounts and the miracles, every time, I've said it so many times, you read these words, according to your faith be unto you. Go, your faith has made you whole, go. And Jesus is always responding to our faith. In fact, Jesus says to this woman, woman, you have great faith faith your request is granted and your daughter and her daughter was healed at that very moment see the truth was Jesus was doing something legitimate with his disciples that he should have been doing but this woman interrupted it the truth was that Jesus has come to the lost sheep of Israel there was no contradiction there We know that that was his heart and purpose. But this woman's faith had broken in in such a way it grabbed his attention. And this is very, very important. And this is the crux of what I want to say to you tonight. That faith, determined faith can pull the purposes of God forward in our experience. (coughs) Do you remember the first miracle that we looked at together was Mary the mother of Jesus, at this wedding in Cana in Galilee with all the Galilean fishermen and the wine had run out. And for whatever reason, she pointed the servants to Jesus and said, whatever he tells you to do, 
do it. And then Jesus said to a woman, my time has not yet come. Or in other words, this is not the season. I wasn't supposed to be doing miracles at this point, Mom. That's not what I was supposed to be doing. There's a timeline in the, in the purposes of God and in this timeline, I wasn't supposed to be doing that. But her faith changed the time setting. And I believe right now that if we will trust God, things will begin to significantly change. And some things that we have put into a future context and maybe some things that God has put into a future context, we can pull it into the here and into the now. It's very interesting. This lady who falls at the feet of Jesus, screaming out about her daughter's condition, her time had not yet come. It was not time for this woman this Canaanite, to receive anything from God. He, Jesus had come to the lost sheep of Israel. But her faith made a demand on Jesus and what was stored up for the future, which the book of Acts tells us all about. There's an unfolding revelation, isn't there, to the Jews first and then all of a sudden to the Jews' surprise at the church in Jerusalem, there's all this uh, stuff that goes on. Steve's preached about this long and hard. They all get thrown out and they all have to go into all the nations and they're, they're, they're tortured for their faith and all the persecution happens. And all of a sudden, they realise that the purpose of God is just bigger than one nation. In fact, when God spoke to Abraham, it was prophetic, wasn't it? He said, I'm going to give you sons and daughters, like the stars in the sky, speaking of his uh, heavenly people, the church, and sand on the seashore, his earthly people, the Jews. And so it was always in the heart of God. But it wasn't in the time frame that had been set. And this woman, it wasn't her season, it wasn't her moment, and it wasn't her time. But you know what? Her faith allowed her to jump the queue. I'm not telling you anything that the Bible is not saying tonight. I think sometimes we need to start leaping out in faith and seeing what God will do. Keep putting things into a future context is sometimes not a good thing. I think that we need to trust God and, and, and God has plans. But you know what? God's good enough when we make demands on him by his faith. He's sovereign but then he will allow his plans to come in a different season and a different time. I believe that with all of my heart. God will change his heart. He, he's done it before. When people of faith start to work with God, God starts to work with them. God never ever had this intention of having these blueprints on the wall and not allowing us to be part of it. The whole narrative of the Bible from beginning to end is us co-labouring with the God that has loved us and saved us and set us free. He wanted his creation to be part of all that he's been planning and doing. And he wants to work with us. And so I just see this beautiful picture here. I just want to really just emphasise again tonight that for some of us, you find yourself in uncharted territory. It doesn't matter. The most important thing is that we have faith towards God and that we're listening for his voice right now. The more I start to see God unfolding what he's unfolding, the less equipped I actually feel that I have anything to deal with. It's, I, I, like, I feel like my toolbox is almost empty. The whole Mark thing, if you only you knew that that, that that was the polished cut version this, this morning, there's enough to write a book and ill-equipped we were and ill-equipped we still are and it's been the Spirit of God and just listening to the wisdom of Christ that has allowed to see that thing come to pass. And for some of us, we need just to get that into our hearts and into our lives right now. This is not about building a church on business principles. If it was about that, I've built some very successful sales teams. I've made a lot of money in my time doing what I have done best. But I have come to understand that People don't need a salesman, they need a saviour. And they need us to be listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit because only he knows the deep longings of people's hearts. And there are people out there that are really, really struggling. And in the natural, we have our own answers, of course we do. We like to think that we have the answers. But actually outside of Christ, we have very little to give to most people. 
But as we listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit and as we've been seeing the ministry of Jesus, he, he never did anything that he didn't see his father doing or, hear, or, or speak anything that he didn't hear his father speaking. And I believe as this woman reached out in faith, the father prodded him and says, OK, go sort her out now. Her faith has opened up a whole series of blessing to her that she would never have had before. Something struck me the other day, and I just want to pray into this as we close this evening. Very often we have a mindset. The problem with having a mindset is we take it everywhere with us because we take ourselves everywhere with us, don't we? You know, sometimes, I don't know about you, but sometimes I felt like running away. Perhaps it's just me. But there's odd, odd times in my life I've just felt like taking off and never coming back again. But the only problem with that is the biggest problem would have gone with me, me. The one carrying the suitcases would be the biggest problem and that would have been me. And sometimes we get a mindset. And, and it's like a set mind, isn't it? Mindset, set mind. And I just think that we need to hear again the voice of Christ saying we need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And I think we need the Holy Spirit again to start to wash over us and to start to teach us things that we've perhaps had a mindset block over. You know, so very often, you, you know, you walk into, into churches or you'll start to talk to Christians and their minds are so, so set. I just want us to be a church that's flexible. I'm not saying that we won't have plans. Of course we need plans. We need processes. All of those things are important. I understand that. That's part of leadership, processes, plans, programs. All of those are incredibly important. But I think also we need the mindset that says when God starts knocking or people start coming, we're prepared to be flexible to change and allow God to do what God will do. And it's difficult because if I've prepared three or four hours to come and preach to you and the Holy Spirit is just so inconsiderate as to push me out of the way and to do something different, you know, I've got to learn not to be upset and ridiculous. And that's, that's, the, that's the problem sometimes. I was saying to Steve earlier, he said, was, he, it was my word this morning? I said, great. He said, I, he said, I, I tried to make, I tried to make it more flexible and focus it towards what was going on in the meeting. We need more of that. We need to be listening to the Holy Spirit constantly. It doesn't really matter what I've written in my notes here. What matters is that the Holy Spirit has his way and people's lives are changed for always. And sometimes that just takes us being that little bit flexible. So I want you to think about this story because it's quite an interesting one. It seems on the, on the, as a casual read that Jesus is insulting this woman. He's not insulting this woman. Actually, this woman comes right through and sees a miracle that she should never have ever seen. This is a wonderful, wonderful story. And just does really beg the question about our own faith. We need to be more persistent and we need to be looking and throwing ourselves at the feet of Jesus a whole lot more than we do right now. So let's just pray. I'm going to pray that God will just change our mindset, give us that openness of heart, openness of thought. Far too easy to look at other structures and church structures and say, if only we were like this or if only we were like that. We want to be what Jesus wants us to be. Holy Spirit, I just pray tonight that you would just take my faltering words and communicate something of your goodness into the lives of the church here. We want to be a flexible, open congregation. We always want to be open to the Holy Spirit. And we've sung that, Lord, Holy Spirit, you are incredibly welcome here. And Lord, we want to be open towards people. And Father, we want to see your work grow here and prosper in a way that we could never have possibly dreamed about. So Lord, would you just continue to use us and cause us to see, Lord Jesus, that you alone are the answer to this world in Jesus' name. Amen.